Hey, welcome back. Today's video has major spoilers about Batman number 77, including the fate of a beloved member of the so-called Batman family. So uh, I think it's time to say to the bat poles. <laughs> Hey, welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's kind of a bittersweet day. I went into the comic shop today, got my comics, sat down in my uh, chili chill spot where I like to sit and eat a little bit of chili, read some comic books, and uh, I read Batman number 77, among a few others, which I'll talk about later this week, um, and got to a pretty surprising part, something I was not expecting to happen. Uh, let's go right to the Million Dollar Comics cam. So Batman 77, part three of City of Bane. Um, basically, in a nutshell, if you haven't been reading Batman, Bane has taken over Gotham City, um, has installed the villains from Arkham, As Arkham Asylum as its police force, and have barred the entire superhuman community from entering, um, and specifically the Batman family, on penalty of the death of one Alfred Pennyworth, Batman's butler. Uh... Wayne has uh, installed his own, or uh, sorry, Bane has installed his own version of Batman, the so-called Flashpoint Batman, Thomas Wayne, um, basically Bruce Wayne's father from an alternate dimension who became Batman in that world. Um, and uh, his Robin, if you will, is a, a, a young lady named Gotham Girl who has incredible high-level superpowers, like high enough that in the last issue... She beat Captain Adam up as if he was a little nothing and basically made him go whimper and cry to daddy. Um, so they've established her as super powerful. And, uh, but uh, Damian Wayne, not really caring about that, is like, I don't care. I don't care if they got that. I'm, I'm son of Batman. I'm going in. You know, I've never really liked this character very much. I never really liked Damian Wayne all that much. Um, but I really liked this issue. I liked the way he was written. I liked his... Uh, cockiness and uh, um, and 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 what what we'll see in a minute. Um, so anyway, he comes up with a magic gimmick. Maybe uh, it implies that maybe he made a deal with a demon, sold his soul or something, and a little funny little bit of dialogue. Um, and and basically neutralizes Gotham Girl with magic because of course when you've got ultra super power in the DC universe, you know magic is the trump card to um, ultimate science based superpowers which is pretty cool um meanwhile this continued batman and catwoman are recuperating batman is a broken man you know this is sort of like the symbolic redo of the nightfall series where bane broke batman's back but in reality he just broke him as a man in this series which is kind of cool um so damian wayne fights his way through you know mr zaz and scarecrow as cops and has uh uh uh, Bruce Wayne is slowly, and I mean I epically slowly, uh, getting nursed back to health. Meanwhile, I really loved the artwork in this and, and, and uh, thought it was just top-notch. The lettering even, the, the layouts here, the, the inking, the moodiness. I really enjoyed the book, and I really enjoyed the writing too. Um, and, and Tom King is hit or miss for me. So... Um, but Damien, a good example of the writing I loved so much, Damien Wayne confronting um, Thomas Wayne. And it's basically like, you're not Batman. You're the one who let his wife become the Joker, who, could, who couldn't save her. And, and like interrupting Batman, you're the one who let his whole universe collapse because of a button. You're the one who gave up Gotham to Bane. You're not Batman. You're pathetic. And punches him. Pretty cool. But I mean, no matter how badass a uh, uh, kid Robin is, um, you, you can't expect him to really go up against Batman. And, and I'm glad to see they didn't, you know, let let him just beat up Batman. Instead, really, Batman just takes him out, as you would expect. Um, but then what you don't expect is what happens when he wakes up. Because he's waked up, he's, he's tied up somewhere, and somebody's talking, and there's some begging going on. And they're saying, please, don't do it here. Don't Not in front of him. Not in front of the boy. No. Uh, and, but, and then, the unthinkable, the unexpected. This is the city of Bane. And Alfred Pennyworth, beloved member of the Batman family. I mean, 
I hate the name Batman Family. I hate the idea that Batman has a family. But if he does, and if he did, if it's anyone, it's Alfred Pennyworth, right? So, um, Alfred as a character. Many different iterations of Alfred. I think it was in the 70s where they sort of implied he had a bunch of military training, sort of as like a medic. Not necessarily as like an assassin or a soldier or anything, but as a a medic, which made sense because he could help Batman, like combat, meatball surgery, whatever. And that always kind of made sense. As the years went on, they've sort of evolved that into like Alfred was really, he was in the SAS, he was a badass, uh, and and maybe had a lot to do with the training of Batman. And I kind of like that idea. I kind of like the idea that the that that Thomas Wayne is 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 Bruce Wayne's father, but really it's Alfred who's Batman's father. He's the one who took the broken Bruce Wayne and something happened between when that between that and him becoming Batman and being an adult. And the only the only adult around during that time apparently was Alfred. So whatever was happening, Alfred had a big role in it. Obviously a very important character in the history of Batman and like a a beloved one, you know. I was railing in another episode about oh how stupid the idea of the Batman family is. I still think it's pretty stupid that we've got whatever three or four different versions of Robin running around at the same time, talking to each other like they're brothers or siblings and, and like just being goofy and fun with Batman. It makes no sense to me. But what does make sense is that like there is no more important figure in Batman's life as a crime fighter and as just as a human being than Alfred Pennyworth. And Batman's already been a pretty broken guy. And what's this gonna do to him? And also, you know, What's this going to do to Damien, who uh, was not supposed to be here, was was told not to, who knew this could happen, and uh, who d- disregarded it all because he's such a cocky badass, and now it's resulted in the death of someone who he genuinely cared for, too. I mean, he all of the Robins sort of have Alfred as a super father figure, even Damien, and... Um, that's tough. I think that's a interesting character. It's going to be an interesting character moment um, that could play out for a really long time with this character. And, um, you know, this is some pretty high stakes stuff. This is high, the highest stakes, really, and stuff we haven't seen in Batman for a long time. So um, I, I really was shocked. What, what was also shocking was this was not expected. I picked up my issue there's nothing there's no special death of there's no foil cover there's no poly bag there's no commemorative card there was not even a solicitation information saying this would happen i mean we knew that alfred was kidnapped and that bane was threatening to kill him but like how many times has alfred been in mortal danger or whatever and even the to like the batman tv show right and like no what what's gonna happen to alfred nothing Right, because he's foundational. Nothing foundational really changes for Batman, except when it does. Right, except like when Jason Todd dies or something like that. This feels like one of those super dramatic, super important moments in a character's continuity in in just a regular issue of a series, not an overhyped collectible edition. Ironically, that's what I think is going to make this very collectible. I'm not the kind of guy who tells you to go pick up the new hot comic. But I'll tell you what, nobody really saw this coming. Nobody ordered extra copies of this thinking that Alfred was going to die. If anybody had reasonable information that he was going to die, people would order a ton of them and they would be available. Today's Wednesday. It came out today. Go to your comic shop today and go get this issue. Pick up some of the previous issues too. Maybe pick up a trade paperback. Drop some money at that store beyond just this issue. Don't be just that guy or gal that comes in looking for the hot book and don't go buy a stack of them, okay? Pick one, like a decent person. Buy one and leave some for the rest of the people out there who might want to enjoy some Batman and hopefully increase the sales for that store and for DC Comics in general because, man, the whole comics industry from retail to publisher It needs help, right? It needs support from the fans, from you and me. We have to support these things if we want to continue reading them. I don't want to live in a world where comics are just downloaded or like put in like eye drops into my eyeballs. I want to read paper comics. I want to enjoy them. I want things I never expected to see happen, happen. 
And uh, that's what I got out of Batman 77. So go check it out, and thanks for watching.